We are a community of women. We are your grandmothers who gave their egg money for world mission. We are your daughters, balancing faith with work and family. We are your granddaughters, bringing new ideas. We are your global sisters, standing in solidarity with you. We are your friends, sharing joys and sorrows. We are women of the ELCA. Dear Katie, Women of the ELCA has been around for more than 20 years. It's about time I checked in with you to let you know how we're doing. Women in more than 7,000 congregations across the church come together regularly for study, service, and advocacy. I can't wait to tell you some of their stories. Food plays an integral part in all our gatherings, but then you know that since you were always cooking for your family, friends, and students in Wittenberg. Yeah, I was calling about tomorrow night with the uh, um, church service that we're going to have, and I was wondering if you would be able to bring um, something for it. Oh, that'd be great. Tater tot hot dip. Uh, I was wondering if you would mind bringing some lefsa. Oh, butterscotch toffee? Yes. Whenever we have something like this, there's, there's never a doubt. There's all this wonderful food and abundance. You'd think we were feeding hundreds. Okay, first of all, you need a fork. Janice Olson and Jean Gilberton. This is a Lutheran hot dish holder. In Madison, Wisconsin, the Inspiration Circle at Bethel Lutheran prepares a meal for working women so that after a long day on the job, the women can break bread together, enjoy each other's fellowship, and hear an inspiring speaker. Lydia's House is a gathering for women that uh, enjoy being together around a light supper and then a great story. But Katie, you know that as Christian women, it's not just about feeding our family and friends, but about nourishing the community as well. In Joliet, Illinois and elsewhere, Lutheran women provide food for those in need. We prepare 80 bags per week, but there is been weeks that we, you know, at the last minute, we make bags for some people because there is so many here that we don't just want to turn them up. I know, Katie, that you often reached out to those in need around you. One of the ways Lutheran women do that today is through quilting. From Alaska to Puerto Rico, from California to Maine, women and girls across the church make quilts that provide comfort and warmth to people around the globe. The Page women at Our Savior's Lutheran Church have done just a remarkable job with the quilting. They have material that they put in a sack and they put it at the edge of the pew and when people leave the services they'll, they'll announce that this is sitting there. If you would like to cut quilt squares, uh, that would be great. We put them in bundles of 48 squares and then the ladies or our senior high girls or whoever likes to sew take these home and make quilt tops and bring them back for us to put together. And my understanding is they've had young people do it, people that maybe can't come to the afternoon or the day quilting that they do. This is how they can participate. The women of Our Savior Lutheran Church in Page, North Dakota have sent over 5,000 quilts to Lutheran World Relief. And no one is going to know who we are unless we show them who we are. And I think by having the quilts displayed on pews, it shows who we are. But along with that, having someone tell where they're going, what's going on, and somehow including the youth in this whole process. In some churches, what they do is they give the graduating seniors a quilt. These are our senior quilts that the ladies put together. Each one of the senior quilts gets a tag that says that it was made from our saviors. So they always have their church family tag on their personal quilt that they receive on Senior Recognition Sunday for each senior. I think of that quilt with this young person that goes off to college. For them to have that quilt and to know that who gave it to them, it was their church, it was the church woman that made it. I said, what a powerful piece, we're, what message we're sending to our young people. Um, would you like to? I love it. <laughs> Quilting is one of those things which historically has meaning, encapsulates the love and the kind of care and concern that you, you know, would wrap someone in, you know, like quilt. It does so many things. 
these quilts are gonna help someone who who has a really critical need sometimes for something warm to put around them or something soft to sit on or maybe something to gra gather up all their belongings and move move on. Quilting is just no better way to pass on God's love and concern and your love and concern no. for others. Not only do we make quilts, but we assemble health, school, and other kits for use around the world. Barrett and Josie, the first thing we need is what? What's notebook? Our notebook, okay. Okay, what's next? Mom, so. I'm, Mom keep it there. When you think of a tradition, do you just share it with adults? I don't think so. When you think of tradition, you think of the family, you think of all ages. And I think that's what we need to think of when we talk about women of ELCA or we talk about uh, ELCA. We need to share that with the youth. Lutheran World Relief is tremendously blessed to be in partnership and shared ministry with women of the ELCA. They truly model what it means to be a Christian servant. Each year, thousands and thousands of quilts School kits, health kits, layettes, and sewing kits come to Lutheran World Relief from women of the ELCA. And with their support, we're able to send those quilts and kits throughout the world as a message, as a symbol of care and concern for families who are in great need and dire circumstances. Lutheran World Relief owes a great deal of gratitude to women of the ELCA for their partnership. Whether it's making quilts and kits or supporting Lutheran World Relief financially, or actively advocating for the issues that are important to us, women of the ELCA are boldly putting their faith into action to support the work of Lutheran World Relief. In the 1990s, Lutheran World Relief wanted to launch a project here in the U.S. to encourage Lutherans to support small-scale coffee farmers by buying fair trade coffee. And from the very beginning, women of the ELCA have helped to make the LWR Coffee Project extremely successful. Especially in 2003, when Lutheran World Relief and women of the ELCA partnered together to launch the 90 Ton Challenge. Our goal was to get U.S. Lutherans to double the amount of fair trade coffee they purchased in a year's time. With the help of women of the ELCA, we not only achieved the 90 ton goal, we exceeded it by more than 10 percent. In October 2006, Lutherans purchased 153 tons of fair trade product. It's blended just for Lutheran World Relief. 14 million cups of coffee. Imagine how much coffee Lutherans are drinking. <laughs> There's always coffee. Any occasion, you definitely have coffee. And so not only is it that you're helping farmers, then our profits here go to helping people in our community. So it's really growing to benefit way more than I ever imagined. And Katie, just as in your time, our women rely on scripture and fellowship to ease their pain. Our May lesson is Blessings in the Midst of Suffering, and if you'll turn to page 28, well, let's just go ahead first at the prayer and bow our heads and say that prayer together. Gracious God, you became one of us to experience the full range of humanity, its deep joys and its wrenching sorrows. Can anyone recall a time when you or someone you know entered dark days? Who can't remember anybody uh, that I mean, most definitely. When my father died, my mother went into a period of hospitalization. And um, it says, did you believe you would ever see your way to find the goodness of the Lord? And no, I felt like I was just in the pits at that time. But um, somehow we came up through that. And that was a time I felt the presence of the Lord greatly. I had very dark days when my husband had cancer and through his death and but the the part that I felt the Lord with was when he actually died the night or the morning that he died I knew the Lord was with me. Carolyn um, in the Bible there would you look up Psalm 27 for us and read that out loud? The Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold. 
we began the prayer shawl ministry at Mount Olive in 2003 and throughout the years we have given them to people that have had bereavements, job losses, any adversity that has come up in their life. And I know personally for my own self, I received the first one that we had given. My son died tragically in 2003 and I received the first prayer shawl that they gave out. So I know the meaning, what it means to get one of these. The people that have received them have just been Oh, just overwhelmed. We get the nicest thank you notes. The quilting ministry and the prayer shawl ministry has definitely strengthened our, our congregation and bonded it. It does not take two people to do this. Oh. We <laughs> said there will be no rules. We're here from 8.30 until 11.30. Come and go as you would like, dressed as you would like. Everyone enjoys it. There's no pressure. And I think, therefore, we get a lot more done. You don't have to make any excuse if you don't turn up one day. Gathering finished quilts from all over North Carolina becomes the responsibility of Rachel Price. The first thing I do is contact the trucking company and see if they're going to be willing to do our shipment for the fall. And you're probably going to ship them all out next week. I don't make school bags. I don't do quilts. The one thing I can do is talk. Katie, our women have found creative ways to work together in mission. We were very strong when I first joined, and then we all got busy raising our children, and our group just kind of dwindled down to maybe five or six of us, and we had even talked about disbanding our group. While the circle at Christus Victor Lutheran Church was struggling to keep up their numbers, quilters at Abiding Savior Lutheran Church were suffering similar problems. But Joy Cook reached out to the women from Abiding Savior. They not only brought their quilting skills, they brought their stories with them. My mother lived on the farm, and she only quilted in the wintertime. We raised our own cotton, and we take the cotton to the gin. He would save out some, I guess they call it batting now. And she would take a stick and would lay it out on the long sheet cut. She was a, she would back that. Women were very proud of their finished product and put extreme time and effort and patience. Our group in the last three to five years has grown to anywhere from 14 to 18 women that meet on a regular basis. Santa Cruz Church was looking for a building and at that time First Lutheran Church it was with no pastor. We are an inner city church and as our families start to have their families they are settling in um, subdivisions. They welcome us here to join together in these congregations. So now First Lutheran Church and Santa Cruz are under one roof. Eight-month-old Ava comes to the Eleanor Circle with her grandmother. Yeah, Ava's our youngest member. <laughs> the circle is 80-some years old. I can't remember the exact number. Ava is also the great-granddaughter of the president of the Eleanor Circle at First Lutheran. We had five circles at one time, and we're down now to one circle, and so we chose to keep the name of the Eleanor Circle since it is the oldest circle. Who will be a reader? Sue? Sue? Sure. Would you? We meet once a month on the second Thursday afternoon and we have a Bible study and a business meeting and we have a Christian action that we do every month. And Ava is the mini ambassador between the two communities. Uh, we remember whose we are in this season, that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and whoever walks in him will not walk in darkness but will have eternal life. Jesucristo es la luz del mundo, el que camina en él, no camina en las tinieblas, sino que va a tener la luz de la vida eterna. Ephesians 4. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, Les ruego que beg you to lead a walk vivan de una manera digna del llamamiento que han recibido. We're starting to learn little tidbits of language, and so that's good, so we can communicate better. Because I'm sure that if I was sitting in a circle with them and I didn't have any idea, mm -hmm. I'd have the same feeling. 
Cristo, nuestro pan de vida, ven bendice esta comida. Todos, together. They're just getting settled into this new atmosphere here, and it's hard for them too. We've been here all our lives. Katie, it's a gift to have young women involved on college campuses and elsewhere. It's a joy to see them gather in fellowship, and they have so much to offer. The people in my Bible study group especially just give me encouragement to start my week. They're a great group of people. Yeah, just a group that is safe to come to and safe to hang out with. They bring in perspectives that I would have never personally got out of the readings or out of the questions. Mm -hmm. And in this case, I think it's negative because... The women in the Lutheran Campus Ministries at Marquette are just an amazing group of young women. And we're all just striving to do so many great things. Crossing the Stream is a program at Marquette where two Marquette students are paired up with two high school students and come together and plan multicultural activities. We're crossing this stream of differences or cultural differences and you're wanting to walk in someone else's shoes and see the world through their eyes. The young women of the ELCA are our hope for our future. Come be with us, be in fellowship with us, sing with us, learn with us, grow with us. We'll help you, but you have to help us. We're here and we can make a difference. When all our women work together, Katie, we accomplish amazing things. For instance, together we've been able to provide more than half a million dollars in scholarship support in the last 20 years. And all of those funds have been used to the best of our abilities, supporting women in their callings. And part of that is supporting women who have callings to go back to school, who have an idea to have a second career, who've decided to go back to seminary. For example, a 2007 scholarship recipient was a woman named Christy Manisto, who decided to go back to seminary, was called to serve God in that way. The scholarship that I received from the women of the LCA was given to me because I was a second career woman. It was to support the work that I was doing. The food desert is uh, actually in crisis proportions. I would really like to thank the women of the LCA, not only for the scholarship that they gave me, but for being an organization that supports and understands the needs of women, not just second career women, but all women who are going into ministry. The fact that there is a group out there that supports us and is willing to say that they are behind us is just so important and I am so thankful to know that, that they're there. We take seriously Christ's call to love our neighbors as ourselves. Well, let's see if we can do 2500 for N Street Village. The Women of the ELCA has given over $3 million total in grants since 1988, since the founding of our organization. Our granting recipients take our funding to support their projects that work with women and girls on various issues. These proposals, these projects are so full of hope and the belief in the ability that we have to change the world around us. We receive grant requests domestically and internationally and we try to address both arenas, recognizing that we live in a global village and that it's important uh, not to only support the uh, domestic side, um, but that the international um, part of our world is in great need. One of the international grant recipients is Proceso Kairos Peru, a Lutheran social service agency in Lima. No, eh, uno de los temas ejes que trabaja este proyecto es la violencia, violencia y género. Entonces, por ahí estamos convocando siempre a pastoras, pastores, líderes, no, que a su vez ellos acompañan a mujeres, no, a mujeres que sufren violencia, que sufren violaciones, que sufren maltrato doméstico. Y uno de los desafíos que tenemos eh, en el proyecto es eh, prevenir la violencia, ¿no? Tratar de cortar con ese espiral y promover la no violencia. It's just a very moving experience that you have somehow made a contribution that's going to be helpful uh, to people whose names you don't know or faces you haven't seen or people you may not meet but um, you do know that uh, something uh, transformative can happen in the allocation of these dollars. No es un solo apoyo económico, es un apoyo de amor. Y me hacen sentir, tengo una amiga, tengo una hermana, 
tengo a alguien que piensa en mí, gracias porque me están dando, no un apoyo, me están dando su amor. I know I'm always moved by these stories to give generously. I hope others will as well, so these good works will continue. Katie, I often ask myself what it means to be a disciple of Christ. I can tell you that our church-wide organization creates exciting resources that empower us and allow us to grow as Christians. For example, the Raising Up Healthy Women and Girls Initiative and the Healthy Hearts Fair, which teaches women about emotional, physical, and spiritual health. The Healthy Hearts Fair consists of 12 stations. Each defines a different aspect of our hearts. The pure heart, the prayerful heart, the bold heart. The heart is the only organ that is not just a physical uh, mechanism, but is also the spiritual and emotional place in which God dwells with us. One gets healthy by feeding their body and soul, and the body and soul are intertwined. Salt, we use it every day, but do we really realize the purifying? You know, we're salt of the earth. The water, first of all, reminds me of our baptism, and we need to walk in God's way. It's a reminder of God's grace. It's a chance to be quiet and to step away from the busyness and the business of the weekend and to have an opportunity to be reflective. Women all across the organization are taking part in this new initiative, and we're hoping to eliminate heart attacks and strokes in our lifetime. As women and mentors of our younger women, it's very important that we do all that we can to teach our youth the implications of promiscuity, also the sexual exploitation of women and the trafficking of sex, the entrapment and the degrading behavior associated with it. That is something that absolutely affects their body and their souls for the rest of their lives. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh God, and that's exactly what we need for you to be with us. But Lord, more Each congregation has its challenges. The one facing Bethel Lutheran in Chicago may be one of the hardest. Every family in the congregation has been touched by the loss of a young person cut down by gunfire. How can I help as a member, as an individual in the community to address what's going on? What are my responsibilities as an individual? As a Christian, what is my responsibility to address violence? I wonder what would happen if we followed the biblical examples of people of faith raising their voices on behalf of God's justice. Like Rachel, we are without hope or confusion. Like Rachel, we watch from a distance and nurture them. Rachel's Day is a day of mourning, a day to remember the children that were killed by violence in our community. It's a day to give um, parents a chance to um, express their loss. So it's a time to look at the future and how we can stop it from happening again. Because if you look at the violence that's happening in the world today, it will open people's eyes. Just pick a face and look at that face. Could you imagine that young person, that child, not being with us today? So let us march in these streets yeah. until something changes. Yeah. God, we ask in their name today that you would stop the violence, that you would stop the killing. We want to plant holy seeds on the neighborhood corners here, trying to give new hope and new life here. There are times when I've never seen greater examples of a community's voice raised in unity than in times of prayer, where everybody's heart, mind, and intention have come together for one purpose. As our purpose statement says, we are a community of women created in the image of God, called to discipleship in Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. What we all have in common is our worship of that triune God. We have grown up in a way that is difficult for us to see beyond the stereotype of what a Lutheran woman should be. But Lutheran women are all kinds of women, and if we can't 
finally get to the idea that we're not all alike, that we're not all the same color, that we're all not going to see how to solve a problem in the same way, but we know that we have the support of one another and can work on the things that we need to. Do step out of your comfort zone. There are many ways to be a bold woman. Your way is not going to be my way. And if it's nothing but walking into a room of women where you don't know someone and making the effort to go over and say who you are, find out who that woman is, it enriches our lives if we're willing to do that. As you can tell, Katie, Women of the ELCA is an amazing organization made up of committed and faithful women. I love this organization, and I know many other women do too. It's my fondest desire that the organization grow and flourish. I can't wait to write to you again, letting you know what we've been able to accomplish as bold women. I won't wait so long to write next time. We are created in the image of God. We are called to the discipleship in Jesus Christ. And empowered by the Holy Spirit, we commit ourselves to grow in faith. We affirm our gifts. We support one another in our calling. We engage in ministry and in action. And promote healing and wholeness. Y promover la sanación y la integridad en la iglesia, la sociedad y el mundo. 